Hello, dear guests. Um, today we will walk you through our capstone project, which, as we already said, is about refracture detection on chest CT scans. Um, so what was the motivation to solve this problem? Uh, first of all, three of us had an interest to solve a problem related to the medical field. Um, secondly, uh, we understood the importance of timely detection and uh, accurately detection of refractures for medical diagnosis and treatment planning. And also when um, investigating, investigating the current methods and approaches, um, we did not encounter a paper which mostly focuses on the pre-processing part. So um, we were curious uh, how uh, pre-processing could improve the final result of our detection problem. Now let's understand what kind of data we have used. Um, we used a RIPFRAG data set, um, which, is, uh, which originally has uh, 900 CT scans, um, 720 uh, were designed for training pur purposes, uh, 60 for validation and 120 for test. But as this data set was uh, designed for competition, we only had access to 500 publicly available CT scans. So we decided to divide those 500 by ratio 70 to 10 to 20 uh, for testing, uh, for training, validation, and testing. So we got 350 for training, 50 for validation, and 100 for testing. Um, our data had um, its accompanying labels in nifty format. So we had uh, label codes from uh, minus one to four. So zero was for background, one for displayed refractures, two for non-displaced refractures, three for buccal fractures, and four for segmental fractures. Uh, minus one was also a fracture uh, whose, which type uh, cannot be determined. Uh, so here you can absorb uh, um, the fracture types on this picture. <clears throat> Um, here you can see 2D slice of our uh, uh, 3D image. Um, so the uh, thing in the circle is a fracture. Um, now let's talk about pre-processing. So um, we have used classical algorithms, uh, and those are histogram equalization, canny edge detection, gamma correction and their combinations. Now let's concentrate on the histogram equalization. Um, so histogram equalization is a technique, to, uh, technique used in image processing uh, for enhancing um, the contrast and overall appearance of an image. Um, so um, it works by re redistributing the intensity values of pixels to achieve a more uniform uh, histogram. Um, so here you can see that this was our initial histogram, and after applying uh, those met, uh, this method, we got a more uniform histogram. And also, um, you can observe um, above that um, the, 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 our initial image, uh, the bone in the picture, got more brighter and prominent. Uh, we have used Scikit image library uh, for this method, and um, Equalize hist uh, function had one argument, n beans, uh, which corresponds to the number of unique intensity values in the image. Um, our range spanned from uh, 200 to 1000, so uh, that's why we have passed to this argument 1201. Um, yeah, and now Dan Sarkisan will talk about canny edge detection. So our second preprocessing technique is Kenny edge detection, which identifies the edges of the objects within the image. It is in initially developed for 2D images. However, over time, it was also adapted for 3D images, uh, helping us to find the edges also for volumetric data. So the uh, algorithm operates by finding the regions with significant intensity changes, which indicate the object boundaries. So it performs several steps. 
It performs noise reduction, gradient computation, non-maximum suppression, and thresholding. And as a result, we have the uh, isolated edges while minimizing the false detections. So to use the uh, Kenny edge detection, there were several libraries in Python that we could use, and those are Simple ITK, OpenCV, um, Pillow, and Scikit Image. However, as uh, all of them are initially developed for 2D images, uh, some of them had limitations when used with uh, 3D images of Nifty format. For example, Simple ITK required the uh, input to be of type uh, Inside Toolkit Image Class, and converting our images to this format would require significant computational power. Next, OpenCV required the images to be 8-bit grayscale, and rescaling our native CT intensity range would uh, cause information loss. And lastly, Pillow just doesn't recognize the extension for Nifty format. That's why we opted for scikit images Kenny edge detection function, which performs all the steps that uh, I have already mentioned, the Gaussian elimination for noise reduction, um, gradient computation in all three dimensions with Sobel filter, and after that, non-maximum suppression for refining the edges, and finally, Kenny edge detection function with uh, parameter sigma chosen to be one as a default. And as you can see, the image on the top is the original image with the refracture, and the image on the bottom is after applying the Kenny edge detection function. And you can notice that the image on the bottom is smoother, the background is suppressed, and the edges are well defined. Next, a uh, preprocessing algorithm that we used is gamma correction. Uh, gamma correction is used uh, to adjust the luminance values of the image uh, to have better contrast and uh, better visual representations. So uh, this, uh, this correction compensates for the nonlinear relationship between the input pixel values and the perceived brightness. And by applying the power function, uh, gamma correction can either compress or expand the intensity range, thus compensating for the nonlinearity. So here are the steps we have, that we have performed. Uh, we use min-max scaling to convert our uh, images to floating point format within the range of 0, 1. And after that, we used a NumPy library from Python uh, to perform power function where gamma was chosen to be 2. Uh, this choice uh, of 2 was because uh, we wanted to avoid excessive sharpness and um, excessive sharpness and smoothing. Uh, and finally, we have also tried using the combinations of these preprocessing algorithms. So for that, we had two approaches. We either tried um, performing the preprocessing algorithm sequentially on the same image, and for that we had one experiment. We did histogram equalization followed by gamma correction. Uh, this order was chosen again visually. As you can see, the image on the top is a histogram equalization followed by gamma correction, and the image on the bottom is gamma correction followed by histogram equalization. We chose the first option because uh, the image on the top has, le has less noise and the details are more visible. Next, our second approach was uh, having two input channels either giving two preprocessed images or one preprocessed one image with the original one. Uh, during our research, we found out that edges alone don't give any important information. That's why we decided on giving it as an additional input. And we conducted three experiments for that. The original image with the edges, equalized image on the edges, and gamma corrected image with the edges. So now let's discuss the detection model that we've used. We have used, uh, as the base for our experiments, we used the FragNet uh, model, which is developed by Gina Tal, who are one of the winners of the Reprac 2020 challenge mentioned earlier. Uh, we must mention that Gina Tal are also the publishers of the data, and um, they are the only one in the competition to have full access to the data. Um, 
Our uh, model is a customized 3D unit architecture, as you can see in the picture, and uh, the pipeline is as follows. The input, the patch of the input, um, the patch of the CD scan, uh, which is cut 64 by 64 by 64 with a stride of 32, is input to the model. The output of the model is a raw segmentation of our detected fractures. The overlapping predictions are handled by uh, using the maximum values. Also, some post-processing is applied to reduce the false positives. Uh, we, uh, Gene et al., no, we, uh, um, reduced the smaller connected components, which were, less, which were of size of uh, less than 100 voxels. And they also removed the um, components which were around the, uh, sp the spinal region. Uh, later, uh, after the uh, post-processing is applied, the input is binarized with a threshold of 0 0.1, and the, uh, the final output is compared with the ground truth. Uh, the architecture is an encoder-decoder uh, structure, as you can see in the image. Uh, in the encoder part, the series of downsampling operations are applied, three of them to be more precise. And in the decoder part, the, uh, the feature map is restored by um, using the opposite uh, operations. In the end, the output is shrunk to channel one channel. The output of one means it's a part of our detected region, and the output of zero means it's a background, uh, background pixel. And later, we slightly changed the architecture for the purposes of our study. We changed the input layer here so that it can uh, accept two images. Uh, uh, we applied convolutional layers on each of the images, concatenated them, and connected them to the rest of the architecture. Uh, during the training phase, uh, Gene et al. used a sampling strategy to rectify the imbalance in the data set. They have sampled, uh, negative, uh, they have sampled positive uh, samples centered at the rib fracture. They cut those patches uh, centered at the rib fracture, and the negative samples were chosen from the symmetric uh, bone regions and from the spinal regions, which are out of our interest. Uh, this way, the uh, the model became more uh, precise in distinguishing the negative and uh, positive samples. And uh, here you can see the results of our top three experiments. Uh, gamma correction, yeah, uh, so we, we have calculated dice, recall, precision, and F-beta scores to measure the results. The beta score, uh, the parameter in the F-beta score is uh, taken 0.5. All of the metrics are in the range 0, 1, where higher is better. And as you can see, gamma correction uh, is, the top of our, is at the top of our list, uh, with uh, dice, precision, and F-beta scores uh, being the best. Uh, the original image given with its edges also uh, resulted in improvements in the detection, with the recall score being the best of them. And the gamma corrected images given with its edges to the model also showed improvements in all, in all of the four metrics. Uh, to mention here, in the first uh, column, you can see the Bayes experiment, uh, where we didn't change any parameters uh, from uh, the original model. Yes, so as you can see, uh, giving additional inputs, the, giving additional information to the model as edges, and improving the quality of the images uh, can uh, improve the detection results and can reduce the false positive uh, of the detection. That, that's it for our presentation. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, if you have any questions, we would like to answer those. No questions? Uh, when you mentioned about the F-beta score, yes. uh, which was the value of beta and how have you chosen it? Yeah, the F-beta score uh, is chosen by the, by the Fragnet, by Gina Tull, the competitors. They uh, have chosen a 0 0.5, which is the middle value. If, it is, if a beta score is um, chosen as a 0 or 1, it will be the same as the dice. Uh, the dice uh, score, that's why it's for it to be a different measure, which we have cho they have chosen the middle, um, the middle score. So you can, cho you can choose the better score to be from 0 to 1. 
is it's an F beta score calculated. It's, it's basically a um, weighted F1 score where the weight is the beta, okay? Is it, it is 0 0.5, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes? Thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask a bit more about the post-processing phase. Um, what are the the artifacts that you uh, removed there? And um, so how could you maybe characterize them? Um, and which technique did you did you use to do the post-processing? Okay, so um, as you can see, the output is like a segmented um, fractured region, right? Mm -hmm. So if it is too small, it might not be a fracture. That's why the post, we, they are, um, we reduced the connected components that were smaller than 100 voxels. So 100 mm -hmm. voxels uh, is the threshold saying that if it is less than that size, it is too small to be a fracture. Okay. That's, the first, that's the first post processing and also the um, the, uh, segment, the segmentation masks uh, around the uh, spinal region were reduced. We know we, uh, so uh, can I use a marker? Or let's go back to the scan. Here, as you can see, uh, the rib cage is symmetric, right? So we know that around in the middle here at this stripe, the uh, the coordinates of the spinal regions are um, located, right? So we have also reduced the uh, region, the particles, the segmentation masks, which were around the spinal, uh, lo the location where spine is located, okay? So we have reduced that. And also to reduce the false positives, uh, we, have we have used the threshold to binarize, um, the threshold of 0 0.1 to binarize the output. Yeah, thanks. That makes sense. Yep. Any other questions? Thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, do you use uh, normalization in your input CAT CT uh, images because every CT scanner have different gap between the scans? And uh, let's say for the volume three by three by three pixels, it would be different volumes in real life. Uh, yes. So uh, as we've mentioned, the, we have used the model of Jean et al. And uh, they uh, didn't use any normalization for the CT scans because uh, their scanner, um, the distance between the CT slices were quite small. And uh, basically, the data set for that reason didn't need any normalization. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, have you considered making the binarization a parameter and training on that? Or? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? So you said in the last layer you did a binarization. Correct? Yes, so basically if it's zero, it's a background pixel, and it's one, it's a part of the detected region, yes. Yeah. Um, have you considered adapting, making that threshold, so you said it's at 0 0.1, but it could be any other value, have you considered making that a, a parameter and train that, or, yeah, basically that. Or, uh, have you, or how have you determined that value? Because yes, so um, the model have, uh, fully was fully taken from Gina Tal. So the um, purpose of the study is to see whether applying image processing, so making the quality of the pictures better or, or giving additional information in terms of uh, edges to the model makes the results any better. So we didn't change any of the default um, parameters that the authors have used. We have just wanted to show that um, like playing with the pictures, modifying them, making them better may also um, result may also lead to good results. Okay, thank you. Thank you too. Yeah, here we have a question. Uh, 
Um, I'm sorry, maybe I missed that part. How much data did you have? Um, uh, do you want to answer the question? Okay, so as I have mentioned, we have used the refrag data set and it originally has 900 CT scans. But this data set is uh, designed for a competition and as we are not uh, participants of a competition, so we only had access to 500 CT scans because those were publicly available. Um, does yeah, that answer to your question? Yeah, and also how much accuracy did you get? Uh, uh, sorry, how much? Accuracy. Yeah. Accuracy. Our metrics are, yeah, different. Oh, okay, thank you.